cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video if you would like to join the cuties fam all you got to do is hit that subscribe button the like button and the little bell icon to get notified when i make new videos all my socials will be linked down below including my instagram tiktok twitter discord patreon cameo my p.o box if you want to support me in any way that you can feel free to do that it's pouring rain outside so Excuse the fact if you can hear the like pouring rain and wind. So in today's video, we're going to be catching up with Caitlin Bennett, seeing what she's been up to lately. You know, I've kind of just been like missing her stupid little face. You know what I mean? I just kind of like miss it. You know, we've been doing a lot of other stuff on this channel, doing more social commentary than political commentary, but I like to get back to a bit more political commentary. I like doing a kind of mix. So let's uh, see what Caitlin Bennett's been up to while I've been taking my hiatus of, you know, absolutely destroying her on my channel. <laughs> so she doesn't post as much on like YouTube and stuff because she's created her own website now, I'm pretty sure. So she posts like little clips of the longer videos that she does on her website, if that makes sense. Like she'll do the full uncut version on her website, which I think you have to pay for the full uncut version. And then on YouTube, she'll do little snippets. Wow, it's really pouring right outside. If you want to get the actual like full video, you have to go on her website. But you know what? I would rather stick pins in my eyes than pay Caitlyn Bennett money to watch her videos. So, you know. The first video we're gonna watch is actually a video. It was from like a few months ago, but it was after I stopped like caring about her channel. <laughs> Like, I stopped watching after her one about George Floyd. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna like, I'm gonna head out after this one because you clearly are just so not all there in the brain that I just, I can't anymore. <laughs> so this was actually made right after that, I'm pretty sure. And I just like, you know, I saw the title and I was like, I, you know, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> uh, so the title is, I am not ashamed to be American. And you know what, sweetheart, from the bottom of my heart, maybe you should be, just a little bit. Just a little, just a little bit ashamed. Just a little bit ashamed. Just a little bit, you know? Just a tiny, tiny little bit. We're gonna watch this video. <laughs> Dear Black Lives Matter, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed to be white. I am not ashamed to be a conservative. I am not ashamed to support our president, and I am not ashamed to support our country. You know when you haven't like seen a friend for a really long time, you're like, oh my god, like I miss them. And then you like make plans and you hang out with them, and like five minutes into hanging out, you're like, I remember now why I haven't hung out with you in so long. It's because I hate you. <laughs> It's because I actually do not like you or your face. So when I said I miss Caitlyn Bennett earlier, I, you know, I just needed to be reminded of why I dislike this girl so much. That was a perfect reminder. That was a great, great reminder, okay? I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed to be a Christian. I am not ashamed to believe in traditional marriage. And I am not ashamed to believe God made men to be men and women to be women. Sir, just uh, say you're transphobic and leave. Just say you're transphobic and leave. Like, what? I believe that God made men to be men and women to be women. So just say you're transphobic and there's the door. Like, sir, uh, why you gotta hide it? You know what he really should have said? I am not ashamed to be transphobic. I am not ashamed to be a bigot. I'm not ashamed. I'll be open with this. <laughs> like, sir. I am not ashamed. You don't gotta word it like that. Just be like, I am not ashamed to be transphobic. Sir, you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed for even saying those words, you absolute prick. I will not apologize for believing in Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who asked you to apologize for believing in Jesus Christ? Who? Who was in the comments just like, please apologize. You need to say sorry to everyone for believing in a religion that m much of the world believes in. I will not apologize for calling him my Lord. I believe that Jesus suffered for our sake so that we may have life. I am nothing without the Holy Trinity and the only one I will apologize to is the Lord for my sins. I will not sympathize with your hatred of God and will instead pray 
for your soul. Okay, th I have no problem if you're religious, right? You know, like, I'm not gonna be a bigot and like hate you for being religious, you know what I mean? If it brings you happiness and joy and security and you feel safe in your religion, I'm totally cool with that. My issue is this, you know what I mean? The like, the thinking you're like better than other people because your religion is right or the, the idea that you have such a God complex that you can tell people that your way of life is right and their way of life is wrong and that they're sinners and blah, blah, blah. I yeah, I don't like that shit and that's exactly what these people do you don't need to apologize for being a Christian I know so many amazing Christians I know so many awesome religious people the problem is when you use religion to back the beliefs of your bigotry that's when it's not okay when you use religion to spew hatred when you use religion to rationalize your bigotry and your disrespect and your discrimination, that's when religion is wrong. And that's when you should apologize for being religious, when you use it for negative reasons. I will not apologize for being a conservative. I will not apologize for supporting the nuclear family, for supporting traditional gender roles, and for supporting Western values. I will not apologize for supporting free speech, the free market, and the right to self-defense. You want to take these things away from me, and therefore I feel no sympathy towards you. I believe in freedom and have nothing to feel sorry for. Girl, weren't you trying to sue me like a week ago? Um, I believe in free speech. Except for when this Canadian bitch wants to talk shit about me, then I'm gonna sue her. I know a lot of you wanted an update. She actually backed away with her trying to sue us because clearly she knew she had absolutely no case because we were doing absolutely nothing wrong and it would have just cost her a lot of money to uh, fail miserably in trying to sue us. It was definitely just a scare tactic. She was trying to scare us into taking our videos down, which that's a form of censorship and not free speech. So you're actually a hypocrite. I will not apologize for believing a marriage is between one man and one woman. I believe that raising children is necessary for passing down the truth to future generations. And they need to be raised by a mother and a father oh, to honey, do so. Like, I don't want to like wish this on anyone, but like y'all should really not have kids. I don't want your beliefs to be passed down to the next generations, honey. We need to be progressive. We need to be learning with the times and not going back to like the 1800s when uh, women didn't have rights and the gays didn't have rights and black people didn't have rights. That's what you want. That's the world you want to go back to. We don't want to pass now down to the next generations. We want to grow and evolve and be progressive, so. <laughs> I will not apologize for supporting my president. I voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and will vote for him again in 2020. This does not make me hateful and does not mean I don't value your life. I support President Trump because I love my country, I love my family, and I love my neighbors. I support President Trump because President Trump supports me and he supports you too. I will not sympathize with your hatred for President Trump and do not feel sorry for voting for him. Aw, uh, honey, you should feel real sorry for voting for him. And clearly you don't care about your neighbors unless all of your literal neighbors are white because Donald Trump does not care about one person who is not white or cisgendered or straight. So you clearly do not care about your neighbors because he's doing a lot of shit for minority groups. He literally rolled back rights for transgender people, healthcare rights. Girl, girl, you're actually not all in there. I will not apologize for attending church. <laughs> like who's asking I you to apologize that for that? Entering God's home each week and receiving the Eucharist is essential for our salvation. Okay, we're gonna end it there just because I'm, he's going in, I don't like the religious. Anyways, so we're gonna skip past that video. So I also went on her Twitter and found this great little clip. I don't know what video it's from, but I like to dispel this notion because clearly she just sounds dumb in this. And I like how she said a uh, Black Lives Matter radical, like as if this one person speaks for all Black Lives Matter, right? She bombards someone in a park and it expects them to speak for a whole community of activists. She said, the Black Lives Matter radical told me it's okay to burn down businesses to fight systemic racism, but couldn't even tell me what systemic racism is. And this is a little, video clip. Be looted and burned to the ground? 
Well, it is a big corporation and they have insurance. Can you give me the definition of systemic racism? I don't know the exact definition. Okay. I don't read the exact definition of systemic So you don't know the definition, but you're going to tell me that it exists? Yes, it definitely does. Okay. So where is a systemic issue? Where is a, a law that's in the system or is a policy that's in the system of systemic racism in our country? I don't want to talk anymore. I absolutely love these questions because she always asks people for the definition who are clearly like unprepared for like any conversation. To me, she just likes to like pick on people who like she meets on the street who are ill prepared for a debate or an argument or even like a, a productive conversation. That's like her and someone going into a debate where she was told a week in advance that this debate was happening and the other person was told this morning. Who's gonna be more prepared for the debate, right? So she's she has all of her talking points prepared. She has what she's gonna talk about prepared. She has her video idea prepared, probably has the title already prepared. And she goes up to random people on the street and asks them questions and goes, can you define that for me? Can you, what's the definition of that? And then she, she basically says, oh, see, these people don't understand, but it's like, what if you actually came up to someone who was prepared to debate? What if you came up to someone who was like me? I would so easily answer this question, Caitlin, because systemic racism does not need to be outright written in a law or policy. It just has to exist in the nuance. So of course, if we had a racist law or policy, we'd look at it and go, Yep, that's a racist law or policy and we'd get rid of it, right? The problem is, is the racism hides in the nuance. You create watered down policies and laws that hide racism. Politicians have admitted to this time and time again, which is why I urge people to watch the documentary on Netflix called The 13th because it literally will show you how politicians and presidents have hidden racism behind policies and laws. It's this idea of the war on drugs, right? And being tough on crime and law and order presidents and law and order candidates like Trump who hide these racist ideologies behind these laws and policies like mass incarceration and the prison industrial complex. These policies and these laws that are written in your 13th amendment which says that slavery has been abolished except for those who are incarcerated. So how do you enslave black people when slavery is abolished? You police their communities, you arrest them for petty crimes and give them way higher jail sentences and you keep them in jail and keep them as slaves so that the prison and industrial complex works so that they are creating jobs for like 12 cents an hour they are doing slave labor in these jails in order to keep companies running your country is keeping black people as slaves while they are incarcerated that is where systemic racism is run you can scream and yell about black on black crime you can scream and yell about high crime rates in black communities and high crime rates for black people but you have to ask yourself why those statistics exist it's because of this ongoing racist ideology and policies that have been hidden black communities are more highly policed so of course they're going to arrest more black people if you policed white communities just as much i'm sure you would have higher percentages of white people in jails but you don't because the policies are fucking racist like it's not hard once you actually do your research and you actually look into these facts that the system is fucked yeah so i absolutely love when people like her ask questions like this like show me the policy show me where it's written in the law show me where it's written in our amendments it's like well obviously it's not straight up written because if it was we'd get rid of it so they got rid of all the racist laws and policies and then hid the racism behind policies that seemed fair and this is why it's so important to to educate yourself on these topics because these questions are actually really easy to answer it's as simple as the u.s overfunds policing black communities and they underfund healthcare and education and stuff like that. And so of course, black people are going to be harmed by this. They're disproportionately affected by these. That's systemic racism working. It's racism within the system. It's pretty simple. The definition of systemic racism is racism that happens in, in military, politics, policies, laws, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't need to be outright written in the law for it to be racist, you know? It's, it's the way the policy works and it works against black people. Therefore, it is systemically 
racist. So we're gonna end this video on this one thing because I would like to dispel this notion that Trump is not racist. This video is called Black Voters Break the Narrative. So these, she was talking to black people who agree with her and support Trump or whatever, whatever. And she made a comment here and I'd really like to just completely destroy it and destroy her, her point of view. This is something I often see with Trump supporters is um, them making these comments and I really like to dispute it. So here we go. Who you voting for? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. You like Donald Trump? Like to, let me Who say, y'all actually, he is a pretty cool person. He, he is, is straightforward. Cool he, I'm not voting for him, though, somebody, but he's a cool person. I just want to know, because a lot of people pulling a race card. I'm not racist. I love everybody. So it doesn't matter. But I haven't really heard him say nothing really racist. Like, I never, what was it? What was it that he really said that was racist? He was he a straightforward person to me. Yeah, he's very you know straightforward. Like, like, that's one thing about Donald Trump. He's a motherfucker. Oh, he's he ignorant as sugarcoat. Nothing. He don't sugarcoat. Yeah. So he get my vote. Well, that's my my question. I've asked no, probably hundreds of people. Like, name something Donald Trump has said or yeah, done that's right. racist, Not and they can't give it to me. He didn't gave us some money, okay? With well, this a pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the? F he been helping us all this time. You get what I'm saying? Like, I never. I, I, I ain't. To be honest with you, I ain't never heard him say. You know, I heard him say idiotic, shit, but you know, it wasn't. So bad, racist, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Everybody doing the racist card, like, that fire. So I love how she found, you know, one black girl who uh, supports Donald Trump. I love when people refer to people as like straightforward and direct. So I always think that like the terms straightforward and direct are literally just euphemisms for being an asshole. I understand not sugarcoating things, meaning what you say and you know, not beating around the bush and stuff like that. But whenever people in these contexts refer to someone as like straightforward or direct, all they mean is really they're a fucking asshole and they'll say the worst things that are on their mind. So no, he's not straightforward and direct. He's literally just a racist asshole. And then I love the argument that her and Caitlyn are like agreeing on. Like, tell me, tell me what he said is racist. I want you to bring up a quote. And I love how like you probably ask people on the street who can't be like off the top of their head, something like racist he said. But I'd like to give you, uh, you know, should we do like a countdown? Like top 10 most racist things Donald Trump has said. She's like, I always ask people and like no one, can like give me something, like give me something racist that he said. Okay, sweetie, here they are. So first of all, I'm gonna link some like videos down below where you can actually like see Trump saying a lot of these things if you don't wanna believe me. I'll link videos down below. I don't think I can put them in this video. A lot of them are news interviews with him, which I'm scared I'll get copyright. So this uh, dates all the way back to uh, the 1970s of Trump's racial, slash controversial things he's done. So let's start off with 1973. So in 1973, the US Department of Justice sued Donald Trump for violating the Fair Housing Act. Federal officials found evidence that Trump refused to house black tenants. He refused to rent to black tenants. There was evidence that he was um, informing black tenants that he had no like places available for them. And there was like a bunch of other accusations. And when asked about this, Trump said that the federal government was trying to force him to rent to welfare recipients. Referring to black people as welfare recipients is quite racist. And also just denying black people housing that could afford it um, is also racist. So in 1975, Donald Trump finally signed an agreement saying that he would not refuse housing to black tenants. He actually had to sign an agreement saying he would not be racist when housing people. In the 1980s, Kip Brown, a former employee at Trump's castle, accused Trump's company again of discrimination when Trump and Ivanka used to come to the casino, they would order all the black people people off of the floor. In 1989, many of you probably know about the Central Park Five or the story behind that. If you haven't seen the Netflix miniseries called Now They See Us, it goes over the entire case. I won't talk too much in detail. If you wanna learn more about it, you can research it. But basically five black boys were accused of a crime that none of them committed. Donald Trump went out of his way to spend tons of money putting ads in the New York Times trying to bring these boys to justice and get them the death penalty. He went on talk shows talking about it. He spent 
so much money putting ads out there, trying to get these boys and bring them to justice. And he was actually a really big factor in turning people's opinions very negatively onto these boys. The teen spent 13 years in jail until DNA evidence proved that none of them had anything to do with the crime. As recently as October 2016, Trump has said he still believes these boys are guilty. Will not even concede on the fact that DNA evidence proved that they were not guilty. Here's a quote from Donald Trump in 1991. He said, Black guys counting my money, I hate it. The only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yomolkas yom every day. I don't know what that is. I think that the guy is lazy. And it's probably not his fault because laziness is a trait in blacks. It really is. It's not anything they can control. In 1992, the Trump Plaza received a $200,000 fine because it transferred women and black dealers off the tables to accommodate a big time dealer's prejudices. In 1993, Trump said that Native American reservations should not be operating casinos because they don't look Indian to me. In 2010, the Ground Zero, there was like an idea for a Ground Zero mosque building a little Muslim community in that area. Trump was very against this. I mean, obviously. He offered to buy out one of the investors in this project. And in an interview, he said, well, somebody's blowing us up, somebody's blowing up buildings, and somebody's doing lots of bad stuff. And we all know who he's referring to in this. In 2011, Trump was huge in pushing rumors that Obama had not actually been born in the US. If you don't know, Obama was the first black president in the United States of America. And Trump was pushing false rumors that Obama had not been born in the country, um, which is a requirement in order to be president. He claimed to have like sent investigators to Hawaii to like look at Obama's like birth certificate or whatever, even though Obama has shown his birth certificate, shown that he was born here, Trump still believes that it's fake and it's falsified. Not only did Trump push this narrative that Obama was not born in the US, but he also speculated on Obama's intelligence, saying that Obama wasn't a good enough student to have gotten into Columbia or Harvard Law, and demanded that Obama release his university transcripts, saying, I heard he was a terrible student. Terrible. How does a bad student go to Columbia and then Harvard? That was all before his presidency. Let's look at his actual presidency now. Trump launched his campaign in 2015 by calling Mexicans um, the R word. Yeah, he referred to them as the R word who were bringing crime and drugs back to the United States. His campaign was largely built off this idea that he was going to build the wall to keep the Mexicans and the immigrants out of the US. As a candidate in 2015, Trump put a ban on Muslims coming into the US. His administration later implemented a very watered down version of this policy. Trump has been endorsed by um, many white supremacist groups, although he denies supporting these white supremacist group and repeatedly condemned condemns them, he often throughout his candidacy was retweeting white supremacist groups who were endorsing him. He retweeted many neo-Nazi campaign accounts and white supremacists during his candidacy. At the 2016 Republican convention, Trump referred to himself as the law and order candidate. And if you know anything about history, the, the presidents who were big on law and order and that stuff, like hard on crime, tough on crime presidents, always had a racial undertone within those sayings. Like the president of law and order and a law and order candidate really just means hard policing on black people and black communities. This is known as been a very racist saying for a, like a long time. This is a very obvious saying that's playing to white fears on black crime. Even though at this time, crime in the US had been at an all time low. In a pitch to black voters in 2016, here's what Trump said. You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? Um, I wonder why all those statistics exist, Trump. Maybe, maybe try to fix something. In 2017, when there was white supremacist protests in Charlottesville, Virginia, Trump repeatedly said that the, both sides were to blame for the violence and stuff like that. He was suggesting that the white supremacists who caused this in the first place and the people who were protesting the racism were both to blame for what happened. He also said that there was some very fine people amongst the white supremacists, which is kind of a mirrored image of what he's been saying recently amongst all of the chaos that's been going in the world lately, saying that 
the white supremacists going and storming the governor's office with no masks on were fine people, but the black people protesting their own genocide were a bunch of thugs and criminals. Trump attacked black NFL players for kneeling during the national anthem. They were doing this in order to silently protest systemic racism in America, and he was mad about it. Of course. In 2017, Trump said that all the people who came to the US from Haiti have AIDS. He also stated that any of the people from Nigeria who came to the United States would never go back to their huts once they saw America. Um, Trump, you realize that not everyone in Nigeria lives in huts and not every place where black people reside is made up of huts. It's such a racist ideology that like they don't actually have their own like safe living conditions and that your country is just like so like leaps and bounds better. You are literally a third world country in a Gucci belt, sir. Stop saying that your country is so amazing. In 2019, Trump tweeted that several black and brown members of Congress, including McQueen AOC, are from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe and they should go back to those countries. It's a common racist trope to say that black and brown people need to go back to their countries. It's a xenophobic and racist comment in order to belittle immigrants. You realize that you're a white person, right? Your ancestors were not born on this land. They invaded it. You are technically an immigrant too, everyone is. This is not even to mention all of the recent, very recent comments he's made about, you know, the black people and George Floyd and Ahmed Arbery and saying that white supremacists are good and, and nice people and that people should just listen to them, but then saying that black protesters who are peacefully protesting are a bunch of thugs and criminals. And even what he said about Chinese people and calling it the Kung Fu flu and shit and like all of those comments he's made calling it the Chinese virus even though we are fully aware that viruses don't have ethnicities, he's racist. It's a known fact. Anyone that's personally in his life or who has known him for a long time has even said, yeah, he's fucking racist. So the fact that someone's like, pull out, pull out one thing he said, pull out one thing he's done that's racist. I just did. There you go, Caitlin. You can have it. You support a racist in office. So there you go, guys. We're catching up with Caitlin Bennett. She is just as ignorant, stupid, racist, and bigoted, and homophobic, transphobic, as we remember her to be. She hasn't changed at all. Catching up with Caitlin Bennett is really exhausting, so I'm gonna go take a break for a while. And if you guys want more videos about her, let me know what you actually want me to talk about because this was just catching up with some of her random videos. I don't watch her videos, so if you've seen some that you want me to react to or pick apart or break down, let me know because I don't enjoy watching her videos. So if you've seen one, I wanna send it to me to watch. I don't actually wanna go through her videos. That's all I got for this video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.